Hi everyone and welcome to Church Online here at St. Stephen's. My name is Harry Cook and I'm the creative content designer here at St. Stephen's. It's so great to have you with us and we are wishing you a very, very happy new year. Today, Dave Cocaine, our curate, is going to be speaking all about God's call on our lives. And I don't know about you, but I'm so excited for what he has to bring to us. Now, as we head into a time of worship, I'd love to pray for us. Dear Lord, I pray that as we enter this new year, that we would know of your sovereignty. We would know of your love for us afresh. And Lord, as we come to worship you today, would we know of your presence and your peace? We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If my heart is overwhelmed And I cannot hear your voice I'll hold on to what is true Though I cannot see If the storms of life they come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in faith, I will believe. I'll remind myself of all that you've done, and the life I have because of your son. Love came down and rescued me 
Lord, thank you for that opportunity to worship you and praise your name. Thank you, Jesus, for that reminder that we have so many reasons to praise you. Thank you, Lord, that you gave your one and only son for us. Thank you that your love came down from heaven. Amen. Now I'd love to welcome Dave as he leads us in our reading and speaks to us this morning. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is this one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. I don't mean to ask a personal question, but How's your fridge looking? Ours, by this point, is pretty bare. After various pieces of Christmas leftovers have been in it. You've kind of gone through gradually emptying the fridge of all the turkey and the vegetables as we kind of have gone from this strange post-Christmas period into pre-New Year. You've kind of used every possible dish to get it empty. You've kind of, from, kind of gone from this really busy, intense period and you've come down into this restful, hopefully more spacious place. But then if you're anything like me, you've got to New Year's Eve and your mind begins to wander. You begin to think about the year ahead. For some people, they're super keen on setting goals and targets and resolutions for the new year. For others, it's about developing certain personal characteristics, about being more generous, hospitable, less hurried, quicker to listen, more present. Whatever it may be at this time of year, many of us, to one degree or another, are gearing ourselves up in pursuit of something. We intentionally go after a better us. Now, being a better version of ourselves isn't necessarily a bad thing. But my challenge at the beginning of this year would be instead to lay down our plans of self-help and self-improvement of a, in pursuit of a better us, but instead, just like the mage I did all those years ago, to go after, to pursue God's call for our lives. I want to suggest that to pursue God's call for our lives this year, we need two things amongst others. To pursue God's call for our lives, we need a vision and we need to step out from where we are. 
We've reached this time in the church calendar that we call Epiphany, where we reflect on the visit of the Magi to go and see the infant Jesus in Bethlehem. Often referred to as wise men, tradition suggests that these were men of high position traveling from Parthia. They may have been familiar with Old Testament manuscripts and prophecies, as well as seeing the appearance of an unusual star as a sign of an important moment in history. The movement of the star suggested that this wasn't a natural phenomena like a comet. It could have even perhaps been a supernatural being such as an angel. But regardless of any of that, they were able to interpret the signs of the times, the signs before them. They had a vision of God. I recently went and spoke to our older youth at church. And one of the strange and quizzical questions that I asked them was this. What is the most important part of a car? Now, I gave them some time to think about their answers and they went away and discussed amongst themselves and then came back and came back with some answers that you would think were logical. Some of them said, perhaps the wheels are the most important part because you need motion. Some of them said, well, you need the steering wheel. That's the most important part so that you can direct the car. And others said, well, it's the engine because you need power to move. But from within my own wisdom, I suggested that the most important part of a car is its windscreen. You can have all the power, all the mobility in the world, but unless you can see where you're going, it can become frustrating or even at worst, dangerous. This year, in pursuit of God's call for our lives, my sense is that more than ever, we need a vision from God. The Magi had their vision. They were able to interpret the signs in the sky and see that something supernatural was occurring. It pointed to a monumental event in history. They were going to go and seek and discover the arrival of the Messiah, God with us. Proverbs 29, 18 in the King James Version says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. Or as the notes describe it in my study Bible, it says this, where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision from God. We can often be left feeling and wondering that we have these gifts, we have these talents, we have these passion for causes, but without a vision, we can feel like we don't know how to deploy them, how to use them. We're left wearied with a sense of expectation or even just simply disillusioned. My encouragement at the beginning of this year would be to invest time in getting alone with God, in prayer, with our Bibles, with trusted friends, and seeking to discover God's vision for us. It doesn't mean that when we have this vision, we rely on God less, but instead it deepens our connection with him as we partner with him to see this vision fulfilled. Jesus himself said in Matthew 4.4, 4, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When we have this vision, we may not know every step before us. 
but we know that we are then pointed in the right direction. As it says in Matthew 4.4, we are to continually be reliant on the fresh and daily living word of God to see that vision fulfilled. Secondly, in order to pursue God's call for our lives this year, we'll need to step out from where we are. Referred to as men from the East, the Magi will have traveled many miles, many days in pursuit of who they believed to be the Messiah. However, simply interpreting the signs of the times and the alignment of the stars and staying where they were wouldn't have achieved a great deal. It would have ensured that they were well informed, that they have more knowledge, that they would have been more puffed up. They could have easily congratulated themselves and just patted themselves on the back. But the thing that changed their lives and birthed a new reality for them was stepping out from where they were and encountering and meeting the Messiah. In Matthew 7, 7, Jesus encourages his disciples to ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. There is an implication here that we have an active part to play in pursuing God's call for our lives. More often than not, God doesn't simply appear before us, but instead there is a part for us to play in discerning how he is working and what he has in store for us. Each week as a staff team, we come together to communicate news for each other to celebrate what God has done within the life of the church and within our teams. But also we worship together. But each week at our staff meetings, we'll have a different member of the staff team come to share a reflection or a thought that God's laid on their hearts. And one week, a particular staff member who I won't name and embarrass, challenged each of us as staff to be praying more in the moment for people. Now, what they meant was that in the various conversations that we have with people, either inside or outside the church, there can be opportunities to pray. But what we can often do is say, I'll be praying for you and then head away. Now, we can be well-intentioned and go away and pray for people. But actually, the encouragement, the challenge was that in the moment to stop, and to pray for that person that we would be speaking with. Now that challenged me deeply. It made me think of all the times where I can be so preoccupied or on the way to the next thing or too busy, too hurried and not fully present. I needed to step out to pray for people more in the moment, to stop what I'm doing and not to be in a hurry. And to seek together with that person where appropriate, in an appropriate time, an inappropriate place, what God might be wanting to say to that person. To step out from where I was. Where is God calling you to step out this year? What is the vision that he is wanting to give you so that you can best use the gifts and the talents that God has given you? Let's take a moment now to pause and to reflect and to pray and to ask God to give us a vision and to show us where we can step out from where we are. Dear God, thank you for your presence here with us wherever we are. 
We pray that as we head into this new year, that you would give us a vision for this year. Lord, show us where we need to step out from where we are. Lord, help us to remember that we can't do this and we're not called to do this in our own strength, but we're called to do this in partnership with you to give glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son For our sake you died Thank you so much, Dave, for that incredible message. 
It's been so great to think about what God's vision is for my life. And I'm sure you have been thinking that as well. And how we have that active part to play in the pursuing of God's call in our life. Now to end, I'd love to pray for you as you go out into your weeks. Dear Lord, I pray that you would go before each person this week, that you would bring each person watching and listening a peace that goes beyond our understanding and that you would bless us this week. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Thank you.